18% of Americans believe that Barack Obama's a Muslim. 18%. First of all, he's not a Muslim. He's a Christian. And like most of us Christians, he's not that into it, all right? <laughs>The show does two things. One, that I think, when I think it's really doing a good job, as far as with the PowerPoint. One, it takes things that we didn't all, that we, nobody notice, knows about, that, that we don't talk about regularly, and sort of goes, look at this Chinese guy and this, and this black guy shaking hands about Chinese people being black, which isn't a thing that we all knew about. And so I think it makes people go, oh, I didn't even know about that. Or it takes things we all look at all the time and just sort of turns into a different angle. And that's the UK census. Like, I assume a lot of people do the UK census, but don't think about it from a racial like, lens. Like, you can really see how a country feels about race based on how they count race in their census. Like, this is the UK census. Yes. How would you describe your national identity? <laughs> Somebody's already there with me, yes. English, Welsh, Scottish, Northern Irish, British, other. Well, that's just different types of white people. Look at this. Most of the planet is in other British ones. You see what I'm saying? Like, this is most of the planet. You're like, we just want to find out what type of whites we're dealing with. All right. I don't have any problem expressing frustration with the audience. And I, frustration is probably the engine that pushes me to do the most things. Like, just like, ugh. Let's try this again, you know, and that's why I have all the PowerPoint and all the stuff in the show is because people, I would tell people that without that something, be like, you're making that up. And I can be like, no, there it is right there. Fine. You some of you are like, I don't know about that black guy. Well, look at the next question. What is your ethnic group? White, English, Welsh, Scottish, Northern Irish, British, Irish, Gypsy or Irish traveler, any other white background? Please be white. Please be light. For the love of God and queen and country and tea at four, please be white. It's only the hard part is the audience. <laughs> the hard part isn't the generation of material. The hard part is making sure the audience understands that this is okay to talk about and it's okay if they disagree with me as long as we keep the conversation Wait, going. I don't want you to feel like I'm beating up you on you. I'm not beating up on you. I'm just encouraging you to embrace the idea. Look, I'm not mad at you white people. Some of my best whites are friends, all right? <laughs> Do you find a lot of audiences disagree with you? You know, it's funny, it depends on the racial makeup of the audience. Like in the States, I do a thing where it's two for one if you bring a friend of a different race. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> you're like, whoa. Uh, yeah, not even Martin Luther King Jr. did that. Gandhi didn't do it. I'm better than both of them. Just kidding, don't email me. Works. <laughs> but all I know is when you marry a Catholic, you're not a Catholic, you have to fill out paperwork and sign <laughs> forms. You don't do that when you marry a black person, sign this black form. <laughs> I literally, we had to sign a form. No, I said if we got married, we had to promise to try to have kids, which is a weird thing to sign for a priest to ask you if you're going to fuck your wife. I think that's weird. And you, are you going to fuck your wife? Yeah. Are you going to leave some in her? Hey, slow down. That is nasty. None of your business, priest. Is there, is there anything that's kind of influenced you then in terms of creating your material from either America or Britain? Well, uh, I mean, I'm a huge, this is funny, both from America and Britain, I'm a huge Bill Hicks fan. Uh, so I feel like he's both from America and Britain. The, the UK certainly claimed in a way that America still hasn't claimed him. Uh, so I, that was the first, I mean, I liked comedy before I liked Bill Hicks, but I started doing comedy and very quickly got introduced to Bill Hicks and I was like, oh, and I'm not like Bill Hicks. I don't think anybody would ever accuse me of being like Bill Hicks, but just the idea of like pushing your ideas as far as you can is a thing I learned from Bill Hicks. There's a sign of form that said if we got married and tried, if we had kids, we would promise to raise them Catholic. Again, there's no promise to raise your kids black form you have to sign. <laughs> You know, but I signed his form. I was like, yeah, I'll sign your form, Padre, but just so you know, this isn't real to me. <laughs> this is like Dungeons and Dragons. I don't give a shit, all right? Have your God to my God, I'll be outside. Have you ever actually got angry on stage? Has it ever oh, yes, gotten to that absolutely. point? Yet? Absolutely, yes. I mean, there was a time, there was a point tonight I was like, don't make me angry, audience. In my head, I was like, don't, don't, don't make... I, I made a choice to like, okay, I'm going to actually... Not make it softer, I'm gonna say this in a different way and sort of reach out to them. Cause it was like, if it had continued on the path that it was on, I was like, I'm gonna get angry. I've been angry since I've been here a couple times, several times, you know, but, and sometimes you let people know and then sometimes people think you're angry, you're like, I'm not even angry. So if you get angry, you're gonna make it worse. So, but certainly I'm a, I'm a big fan of anger as an engine to push your point through. Not that it has to even read his anger, but it's certainly like, you can, I can feel really angry inside and not let the crowd know necessarily. People find problems with that. Like in America, we're trying to do a quantum leap forward and make gay marriage legal, and a lot of the people are getting upset about that. And here, you guys are trying to make a quantum leap forward with how you treat the Arabs and Muslims, and, and people are having a problem with that. And a lot of those people are the old people. Those are the people who are the last ones to be convinced, because old people get afraid. They think, this is weird. This is not how it was when I grew up. And I just want to say to the old people, look, when the world gets too weird for you, that just means it's time to die, all right? <laughs>
That's There's a massively optimistic tone at one point as well. It, yeah. uh, something I hadn't heard before as well, this um, idea of we're becoming more liberal, just not, I suppose, visualised the way you did. Yes, no, I think that's, uh, that's what I think. Is like people don't really, some people don't think that's optimistic, but I do think that over courses of human history, society always becomes more liberal. And it's sort of when you think about it, you go, yeah, I guess, because when I say if there were people who live forever, uh, there'd be men alive from 20 years ago being, I don't understand what women are reading. People go, oh, yeah, that's true. Good thing they died. <laughs> you know, like, so like, I feel like we have to sort of hold on to that in times when it's trouble, when you go, oh, I think the world is coming, is getting worse. It's like, no, it's actually a lot better than it used to be, but that doesn't mean it can't get better. It's all right, white people, with your bad self. Say it now. I'm I'm white teeth. Oh, Jesus.